What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. If you're new to the channel, do me a favor and hit that sub button. Hit that notification bell. Make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content that we have coming out. Now, it being Indie Comics Weekend, I do have one indie comic for you guys. And that is Geiger issue number 6. Now, if you haven't been keeping up with this line, go ahead and check out the link in my description as well as the top of this video. It will get you completely caught up on everything that has been going on in this line. And this is being published by Image Comics. It's created by Jeff Johns and Gary Frank. The colorist is Brad Anderson. And what we've really seen is a new post-apocalyptic world. A world that is suffering after the nuclear blasts, after nuclear weapons were shot. Not really knowing exactly what happened, but knowing these bombs came down in an instant. When these bombs fell, Geiger threw his family into a bomb shelter, only to find out years later that they did not survive. And now wandering the wasteland, he has ran into two children, Haley and Henry. And these two kids needed to get to NORAD. Unknowingly, they were carrying the nuclear football, the last locations of the nuclear weapons from the US arsenal. Making their way to NORAD, they find out that Henry has leukemia. And because of this, they were going to essentially euthanize him. Haley, of course, being opposed to this, telling Geiger what they have in store, Geiger goes to rescue them. And with that being said, Let's dive into this breakdown. Alright guys, so this is a big issue, but this one is closing out this story arc. The whole story has been a narration. We've seen these two individuals off and on throughout the issues. Two individuals sitting in radiation suits and one of them telling a story. Telling a story of the glowing man. Giving us our narration on how all of this transpired. And the story he's telling us is that the glowing man while he may be unique to his era, he is not a unique individual to war. Because every single war, they have had individuals that you could call legends. Dating all the way back to the American Revolution, they had the individual known as the Immortal. In the American Civil War, they had the Historian. In World War II, the name was the Monster. In Vietnam, the Robot. In the Unseen War, the Ghost. And now, in this new era, in the unknown war, that's when you have the glowing man. And 20 years after those bombs drop, the king of the casino, he is in search of the glowing man. He needs his vengeance. He wants his vengeance on him. And he will do whatever it takes to find him. Having a map, knowing the location of where they are going, they are going in hot pursuit looking for any trace of the glowing man and these two children. And while they make their way to NORAD, this is when we pick up with Henry. Now Henry, he's in an observation room. And in this observation room, he's been given a, a crap ton of ice cream. Really just to keep him calm, keep him relaxed, because really they're getting ready to murder him. That's the easiest way to put it. They are about to euthanize him. And while Henry, he's asking for a different flavor of ice cream, this is when the door comes crashing down. One of the soldiers seems to be thrown through it, and this is where we see Geiger. And as Haley rushes in, she tells him that, that she's sorry. Sorry for all the times that she made him feel bad for feeling tired, not knowing this whole time that he's sick, letting him know that he is sick, that he does have leukemia. And this is something that Geiger can really relate to. He can relate to it because he was sick at one point in time as well. But what we've seen over time is Geiger really adopt these two as his own. Really taking them under his wing, under his protection, and making sure nothing happens to them. Maybe a, a sense of responsibility because he felt like he failed his own family. And so this is his, his penance, if you will. This is his way of making up for that. But even with guards on their way, guards marching down the hallway, Geiger still takes the time to reassure Henry, to let him know, to give him a, a great hug, embrace him, and let him know that somebody is there for him. No matter how scared or, or how worried you are right now, this somebody has you. And as the guards start to close in, this is where we see Barney and Geiger jump into action. The two of them taking them out quickly, and a young boy coming to their aid, saying that he has a way for them to get out. With two radiation suits in hand, he shows them an exit that they will be able to get out of here. 
And when asked why he is helping, the, you know, the whole reason is not everybody enjoys living here. Not everybody enjoys the rules of this place. And not everybody believes that you should be put to death for that. But as they make their way into this room, as they go to make their exit, this is where we meet the GI freaking robot. And with Geiger telling the children to stay clear, this is where we see the brawl break out. And as Geiger goes in with his dampening rods, swinging them away, one of them gets broken. And he's learning very quickly that this robot means business. That this is no ordinary bot, it is definitely powered by something else. And so going to try to end this quickly, he tries to melt the head of this robot. Putting his hands on the head, it does not melt. The helmet, everything else melts away, but this robot is still standing strong, beating the crap out of Geiger. And this is where we see Geiger get knocked for a loop and sent flying across the hangar. With this happening, there is a giant explosion and it sends him flying outside of the hangar. And from the flames, we see the robot charging at him, programmed with one thing in mind, and that is to kill him. And as Geiger is fighting this thing, he's realizing that it is nuclear powered. With the children trying to run to the aid of Geiger, they almost get themselves blown the freak up because we see the robot aim at them, launching a couple of missiles, and Geiger barely being able to protect them. This sends him blasting in the opposite direction. With the robot now standing over the children, Geiger comes running in, he jumps, and comes to put his dampening rod directly into the chest of the robot. This hitting its main power core, this puts it offline. We see the robot drop to the ground and it is defeated. And this is where we see a whirlwind of emotions. With him now taking the risk of going, going absolutely nuclear. Without his dampening rods, everybody around him is in danger to include the children. Now he tries to tell them to get away, but they bring him the other dampening rod. Trying to put it in, it breaks away. And so now having no way of controlling this, his emotions are getting higher and higher and he is telling the children that they need to run, that they need to stay away and get as far as possible. But they refuse to leave his side, saying that they are now a family and that there is no way they are going to leave him and reaching out for him, knowing that they will not be hurt by him, that he will not hurt them, we see him start to die down. We see this nuclear go under control, and he brings it into himself. And as we see them embrace, we're really seeing these, these touching moments where Geiger is really starting to reconnect back with his humanity. After being disconnected for so long, after having his family found out to be dead this entire time that hope he had broken he disconnected himself in such a way and it took these children on the brink of death to be able to save him to be able to bring him back and remind him who he is to remind him that he is cared and loved for and as the three of them go to make their escape, as they go to get out of this place, this is where we see Rick, the young boy that helped him get out. And we see him wave. Something happened to his eye. It appears to be wounded, possibly even missing. And the soldiers rush him in because he appears to be the son of some be someone very, very important on the inside. And so with them grabbing a Humvee, they make their escape. Driving out of this place, not knowing what direction they're really going to go at this point, but having an idea of a place they might be able to go. A place where they might be able to help Henry and also help Geiger. Help Geiger get some new rods that can help him maintain control. And as they are driving away, as this Humvee is leaving on the horizon, this is where we see the king and all of his men. Bring along Bonnie and the other factions. They are ready to do a full on assault. And this is where we see Geiger tell the kids to wait in the car. Telling them to wait in the car, he steps out of the vehicle and starts walking towards them. Knowing the king to be arrogant but also a coward, he is going to send one of his men. Seeing this as a challenge, seeing this as a challenge of the king's honor, we see the king send one of his nuclear knights. Sending them down near, we see a vehicle making its way down the hill. And as it picks up speed, as it's about to crash into Geiger, this is where we see Geiger 
turn on the glow, and he slices that Humvee directly in half. Now, all the other factions, after they see this, they run. They run immediately because this is not something that they're willing to risk. They realize the cost that this is going to take. More than likely, it's going to take one of their lives. And that is not something that they are willing to gamble with. And so Geiger turns around, he hops in the vehicle, and he knows now that they are going to let him pass. They aren't going to do anything at all to stop him. And he is 100% right. Blowing right past them, he heads to somewhere that is going to be able to help Henry with his leukemia. A place that might not be welcoming to him because of things that have happened in the past. And as they approach this fortress, they park outside the gates and an individual known as the Red Nurse comes outside, wielding a gun and telling Geiger that he is not welcome here. Now of course he already knows this, he knows the rules and so on and so forth, but he was hoping that they make an exception because this time it is different. This time he has children with him. And he tells both Henry and Haley that he needs to go in there, that they need to go in there, that he has to stay behind. That they are always going to be together, but this is what is best for them. This is a place where they will truly be safe. Where nobody can get them, nobody is going to come for them here. And turning around, going and getting in the Humvee, and leaving Barney behind, he takes off. Going back to his old home, he buries his family. He reads some books that he has always wanted to read. He took down the giant wall he had, and he sat, and he waited. He waited for the day that the king would return, that the king would come seeking his vengeance. Knowing that he would never leave him alone, he sat here and he waited for him. And inevitably, eventually, the king shows up with a whole armada with him. But this is the day that he has been waiting for, because now Geiger has nothing around him that he can hurt him with. There is nothing around him that he can take away from him. And so now he can truly show his full force. He can punish all of them for everything that they have taken. The hope that they took away from him. For them trying to hurt those children. For everything that they have put him through. And this is where we see Geiger open up with everything he has. And a, a miniature nuclear explosion is seen far off in the distance. Barney seeing this and knowing exactly what just happened. This was Geiger. And that was the end of that story. That was the end of Boulder City. That was the end of The King. But that was not the end of Geiger himself. Because Geiger's story was just beginning. And taking us back to the two individuals that are telling this story. The guy with the missing eye. The one with the eye patch. He talks about how Haley was once very important to him. Doesn't really say in which manner it, it, or how. But we have to assume that this guy is, is very possibly Henry. Was that young boy from all of those years ago. The one that helped Geiger and those two children escape. But with the king now being dead and Boulder City now being destroyed. Everybody in Vegas has come together and they're trying to do their best to, to really fix what has happened. To rebuild what they have and they are making a new partnership. In exchange for Geiger, they're going to be getting a lot of help from the US government. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. I really did enjoy this entire story arc. This whole story has been a lot of fun. It was really good character building on really finding out who Tarek is, finding out who Geiger is, finding out why he has all of this pain, why he has all of this anger, and really seeing him reconnect with his humanity again, being able to find some kind of reason to live for. And so I think this was a great story to, to really give us an introduction to the universe building that's about to go on here because they have tons of stories lined up they have an 80 page coming out in november i believe with tons of little side stories about a, a ton of other individual characters their little origin stories how they came to be the different timelines throughout the wars 
who all of these mysterious individuals were, like the immortal, like the monster, so on and so forth. And so I could see, with this comic being successful, we could see them really branching out and really universe build on a big scale here. And those are always the kind of stories I love. I love good branching out stories that can interconnect at any time and intertwine in any way you need them to. But yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to more Geiger, looking to more of this comic. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. If you have not yet, do me a favor, hit that sub button. Hit that notification bell. Make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content we have coming out. And until the next breakdown.